Hey guys, what's going on? This is Under the Arch Sports. I'm Eric Hobbs, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about Mizzou and their absolute demolition of the Tennessee Volunteers, 36 to 7. But first, please guys, do me a favor, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the video, sign up for notifications, and also find us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on X. Also, we have our second annual UTA Toy Drive fundraiser going on trying to uh, just raise some money to uh, help pay for some uh, Christmas presents for some uh, you know, underprivileged uh, kids, just to make sure they have something on Christmas morning, uh, doing a GoFundMe, and uh, just going to donate that money to the Salvation Army Angel Tree Program uh, right at the beginning of December. So uh, please help us out there. The link it will be in the description. All right. Uh, so... Yeah, 36 to 7, and just a wild game that slowly but surely turned into an absolute beating. Um, you know, you have to start with Cody Schrader. The man was a monster. You know, he became the first player in the history of the SEC with 200 yards rushing and 100 yards receiving. He had 321 total yards that's that's wild 321 yard scrimmage yards that's crazy um one of the best days for any mizzou player um i think it has to be the best running back performance we've seen since tony temple in the cotton bowl new year's day 2008 i think it's gotta be um and he was a monster, and he, it was all the more impressive because Tennessee has been a good defense. They were the number 13 run defense in the country, and Cody Schrader just treated them like they were an FCS team. It was crazy. Um, and, and while giving Schrader all the credit in the world, the reason he was able to do this is because Missouri's offensive line, there were holes left and right all day long. And so give the offensive line all the credit in the world, guys. Uh, what a turnaround. This unit started off the season okay, and I think what you're seeing is a unit that's getting more and more used to playing each other and becoming a more cohesive unit. Because more than any other position group, the offensive line has improved the most during the season. And I don't think that's that's questionable. So credit there. My gosh, there's so many different quirks and stats about this. The defense. They were a miracle 46-yard Hail Mary looking type of pass. One-handed miracle catch. Take that away. They pitched a shutout. They were that crazy play away from shutting out a Josh Heupel high-powered offense. As it is, it's the lowest offensive output of the Josh Heupel era. It's the worst loss uh, Tennessee has suffered in that span. And my gracious, uh, you know, they, they, they did not play well. Missouri played very well. It, We've been talking all season long. Can Missouri finally put it together for all four quarters? They they finally did it against Tennessee, and this is the end product. You know, absolutely steamrolling the number 13 team in the country. Uh, it was very impressive, and it was fun. It was, yeah, you know, it was on display for CBS and everybody, right? The SEC game of the week. Uh, so, yeah. A lot of eyes on it. Okay. Going to get a lot of people's attention in that regard. And, you know, if, when you combine that with the Georgia performance where, you know, they tested Georgia more than anybody else does, and the fact that Ole Miss got boat raced uh, by Georgia, Missouri looks really, really good uh, right now. And I, I think when you go back, you look at uh, what David talked about, his key. Third down and turnovers. Those, those were the two things that he wanted to harp on in terms of being a deciding factor. 
Brady Cook had his interception on the first drive. It was tipped. Looked like he was kind of forcing it to Luther Burden. After that, he was great, and that was the only inter- only turnover Missouri had. Tennessee had three turnovers, so Missouri won that battle three to one. Third down, Tennessee was five out of thirteen, which is not good, but not terrible. Missouri was eleven out of seventeen. That is fantastic. I don't know what that what the math is. That's what that's like sixty percent, sixty two percent, whatever it is. That's fantastic. And that, you know, that was part of why Missouri was able to dominate the time of possession, basically two to one. I mean, mean, for those of you watching the broadcast, you may notice this. They talked about it. Uh, They they had the graphic introducing the Tennessee offense and the Missouri defense. Tennessee wasn't on the field long enough for them to do it in the first quarter. They ran those graphics in the second quarter. Tennessee had three plays and then a punt. In the first quarter, that's it. They were on defense the entire rest of the way. And Missouri converting third downs was a big part of that. Uh, more than once, you know, Brady Cook escaping. Uh, perhaps the most demoralizing one was uh, when Mizzou started the with the ball at like their own one or two yard line. And then on third down, Brady Cook kind of disappeared in the big pile of humanity only to emerge running out of the end zone. And what to the viewer may look like was about to be a safety all of a sudden being first down from Missouri with a little bit of breathing room. That was, you know, gigantic and just kind of, kind of sealing the game on all, all of this. And we haven't really even really focused on the defense, Tennessee, you know, three headed monster of uh, running backs along with Joe Milton, you know, four threats running the football, and they had, I believe it was 83 yards of rushing as a team. This team came in with more rushing yards per game than everybody but Air Force and Liberty. And they had under 100. That's unbelievable. You watch the game and the defensive tackles, they did exactly what they are supposed to do, which is just make a mess of the line of scrimmage, plug holes, Just make it just a mass of humanity where there's nowhere for a running back to go. They did it beautifully. And the running backs had no choice but to run into it and get tackled for no gain or or a loss or try to pop it outside. Either way, Missouri was dominant. And keep in mind, Chad Bailey's out for the year. You know, the, the linebacker, he didn't play. Tyron Hopper went down. He was hurt. So Missouri was doing this without either one of their opening day starting linebackers. That makes it all the more impressive and, you know, encouraging for next season and so forth, but that's wild. Yeah. You know, it's funny. And I think it's, it's even more entertaining. Just kind of makes the win sweeter for Missouri fans. I think to see how Tennessee's reacting, uh, Josh Heupel not really giving Missouri any credit, just saying Tennessee played bad. Yeah, then that's kind of the refrain. We played terrible, man. I I, I don't know. I I can't believe we went to that high school stadium and did this. It is terrible. That team's not really that good. We could beat them any other day. If if Drinkwitz wasn't chasing a two-point conversion earlier than he needed to, it was a 30-point beatdown. Come on. You don't get to say that. So I, I I think Vols fans need to understand that their team is winless against uh, you know, all top 25 teams they played. Alabama and Missouri are the only ones. And uh, they had one good half. Otherwise, they got smashed against top 25 competition. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Ironically enough for Tennessee, Joe Milton probably played the, the best game of anybody, which yeah, he had a pretty solid game. A good completion percentage. Uh, he had like 260 some odd yards uh, uh, passing, had the miracle touchdown, did have the pick six. Uh, that kind of really was the cherry on the top. Kind of said, yep, this thing's over and got the party started at Faroe. Uh, I've seen a lot of people say that this was a cathartic type of thing uh, where 
Missouri kind of felt like it was exercising demons. You, you, you go back to the 2021 game at Fro that was just over in the first quarter. And then the 2022 game, giving up 66 points and Tennessee scoring when they're up by 30, scoring a touchdown with less than a minute to go. Uh, I, I, Missouri tried to downplay it, but you know that was in their mind. They were pissed. So that, that there you have it. You know, the, the team mantra for the week they said was, yeah, 40 minutes of hell. Uh, that, that's exactly how it felt. Or 40 minutes. Uh, six, four quarters of hell. Excuse me, I'm going. The Mike Anderson, Nolan Rich- Richardson references there. Four quarters of hell. Uh, that's what it felt like for Tennessee and their fans. There's no doubt about that. And, hey, look where Missouri's at, number 11 in both the AP and coaches poll. You know, we'll see where they are in the uh, CFP rankings on Tuesday. Got to think 11 is probably where they're going to uh, land at. But again, we'll see. Uh, you know, we're going to do a, a video uh, explaining, you know, rankings and bold destination possibilities. So I'll explain why all that matters. But check that video out. Uh, it'll be out pretty quickly here. Uh, hey, keep it tuned here under the Arch Sports. Talks more blues, eight goals against Colorado. Hey, uh, you know, at least for right now, looking like a more competitive hockey club. You know, and we're going to dig into the Cardinals offseason. Are they really going to be big players or is it all talk as usual? We'll discuss it. Until next time, thank you for watching this video. See you guys next time.